Brothers in Arms Hell's Highway is a 2018 strategy shooter, or at least that is the most simple way I can describe it. It is the cap, the end to the main game trilogy of the Brothers in Arms series. You follow a group of soldiers through World War II in Europe, and drama unfolds. There is a big focus on story throughout, although it's not something you can affect. It's more of a character study of how these men react to the events they're living through, and how it is taking its toll on them. I came in at the end of the story. I have not played the first game at all, but I did play a decent amount of the second game. You play as the same character throughout the series, Matt Baker. When you're under fire, there's really only one thing on your mind. Survive. I ran faster than I ever ran in my life, and I was carrying 30 pounds of gear. Somehow your brain starts to rationalize. Just get down this road, Matt Baker. Just get down this road and you'll be going home. It's only once you stop running that you start to wonder. Will any of us actually return home? I enjoyed the story that was there and was able to piece together what the important story beats were from previous games. All three are available on PC, I'm not completely sure why I didn't seek out the others. But when I did play the second game, I played for about four hours before honestly losing interest. I don't think that was a fault to the game, just the difficulty I encountered because of the mindset I had. Overall, these are a much slower game than even the old Call of Duty games, despite the setting maybe convincing you otherwise. This is a strategy game, and running and gunning will get you killed. Go solo and you'll die quick. Leave cover and you'll die quick. Don't properly position your squads to suppress or flank the enemy and you'll be stuck, or just die quick. The game in particular, at least in my limited experience, is particularly console-fied. The Steam page even markets it as a console game in the description for a PC game. In retrospect, not a great sign. The first person FOV is terrible, and I didn't find any way to change it. Eventually, I just adapted and overcame. Guns are more spray than I really prefer. I don't want full-blown hit scan, but I like my shots to go in a closer vicinity of where I'm shooting. This is counteracted by weapons like the bolt-action rifles, being pretty satisfying if you take the time to sight in. Uh, you see there is a mechanic in the cover system where, when you aim over or around cover, if you wait a second, your crosshair will steady and get tighter, giving you a better shot. This is lost if you take repeated fast shots. In first person, when you are outside the cover system, you can actually aim down sights. Unfortunately, the FOV and overdramatic sway of the character, even sometimes the sight models themselves, while mostly historically accurate, make this very uncomfortable. The aiming system works better from cover. Like I said, between how fast you die out of cover and the aiming mechanics, you will not be soloing her. The game provides a good degree of challenge and makes you rely on whatever squads the level gives you. Where you place them is important as some cover is easily destroyed. This is a nice touch when used against the Nazis, not so great when you're on the receiving end. The squad pathfinding is downright stupid sometimes, where they will run straight through open terrain to get to where you want them instead of making their way there behind cover. It's like directing your soldiers in the original Age of Empires 2. At least before all the remasters. Direct them to take baby steps around the office. On the normal difficulty, your soldiers are usually resurrected from mission to mission, thankfully. To mix up the gameplay, they do make you clear some houses by yourself. Usually, they'll still encourage you to use the cover in these areas. It's a nice change of pace. I always enjoy building clearing in these war games. There is another section where they have you provide sniper cover, and I enjoy that quite a bit. The only sniper platform in the game is a scoped Car 98K, and it's very satisfying. The game does a great job of highlighting certain kills, knocking back those dopamine shots. The game will go slow mo, you'll see their head explode, and the game plays this musical note to really sell it. This happens at points where I directed a bazooka team to take out a bell tower, or knock out a tank. The slow-mo destruction is so good, chef's kiss. 
That's what really keeps the action going. There are even sections where you get to drive a tank in clear areas. It really balances the challenge of the game with letting you feel like you're driving a powerful weapon of war. I'd almost like a game just made up of these sections. I remarked a little on the story, but I, I don't want to go too deep into it. The story after all the squad has been through and, and what has been lost does leave us at the end of the game with a stirring speech and a promise for the future. It hints at the next game taking place in the snow as they push into Berlin. Stop. Please. This is not your stop. There's more road ahead. Tell me, Matthew. You've made it through hell. How do you feel about snow? I can handle snow. We've all made mistakes. We've all questioned what we're doing here. And we all feel burdened by the cost of the fight, especially in the face of defeat. But I'm not retreating. I'm standing alongside of all of you. I'm still standing right here. I'll walk us straight into Berlin if it's asked of us, and it probably will be. Sadly, that game never came. There were quite a few mobile titles after this. Most are officially unplayable now. This game got decent reviews, but we never got that sequel. Randy Pitchford in the last few years has made claims about a forthcoming game, but nothing substantial has been shown. If you watch Civ 11, you probably don't have much esteem for the words of Pitchford. This series was the first games that Pitchford Studio Gearbox released, having mostly done expansions of popular games up until they put out the first Brother in Arms. Each game in the trilogy did get a lower aggregate score going from the first game in the high 80s to this one in the high 70s. Despite this, this title is the one that clicked best with me. Granted, the first person is clunky and you move slow, the graphics aren't particularly great, especially in some scenes where the silent light is coming through and it's really supposed to be that money shot, but it's aged too much. I don't mind the graphics, that's never been a big deal to me. I don't want to see a remaster of any of these games, just a sequel. But it's been 15 years. If the series does come back, chances are it will be unrecognizable to the original fans. The studio will feel the need to create a fresh experience for this generation of gamers, and it will all be downhill. It will be at best trendy. This is just what the industry has taught me to expect. The mobile games did not continue this particular storyline, each choosing to create their own, which is probably for the best. I enjoyed the game, but it won't be for most modern gamers. You'll have to have the right mindset with an interest in the dramatic events and be willing to tackle this war story at a slower, more methodical pace. The gunfights can still be quite pleasing, and I'd love to see the story finished. This has been Stormdog, and until next time. So here we are. Brothers, fathers, saints, and sinners. Let's bring this fight back to the Germans. What is it that makes a great soldier? Is it his brain? Or his heart? <laughs>